Okay, let's get with the big man, part of the CBS crew, and uh, he is, uh, you know, he's feeling good. Now, he's got to balance that bias. Although the one thing I like about these, they don't hide who they're rooting for. Of course, you know that Brendan Haywood went to North Carolina, and of course, you know that Brendan Haywood wanted North Carolina to win. Brendan, Tiki, and Tierney, what's happening, buddy? Good to have you back on. How are you? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. You got it, dude. Um, you know, there there seems to be really only one interpretation of the way the game was officiated last night, and that was, you know, overly aggressive, tight, bad, you know, nothing complimentary. Did you see it different? I mean, is there anything that you saw last night that we framed it wrong, that the refs just didn't have it a brutal night? And really, I, we both think stripped away a lot of enjoyment for the biggest game of the year. This wasn't the, uh, the, the refs' finest hour. Um, there were definitely some missed calls down the stretch of the ball game, play when Kenny Meek is out of bounds. Um, then there was the play when uh, they gave Gonzaga extra possession when they said the ball was tipped out by Carolina on a three-point shot when it clearly wasn't, which led directly to uh, a three-pointer by Nigel Williams-Goss. Um, then there was some – it was a lot of fouls being called inside, foul trouble on both sides. Um, so the, it wasn't the official's finest hour, but at the end of the day, the players still decided the game. But here, in this situation, I'm glad the officials were bad on both sides. They were equally bad. Yeah. Because could you could you imagine if, let's just say, something, something – Carolina doesn't win that game and everybody's talking about – the ex possession that uh, Gonzaga got when they got the three-point shot. Yeah. Um, that I mean, that would haunt Carolina fans forever. Like, that led directly to a three that Gonzaga shouldn't have had with probably two to three minutes on the clock. So, uh, they, the officials weren't great, but they messed up both ways. Yeah, and Mark Few did a good job, at least diffusing it for the Gonzaga faithful by saying he thought they did a great job, which I don't know what game he was watching. Um, but the <laughs> the other side of it, is Roy Williams. And with Roy Williams' third now championship, two of them being at North Carolina, he puts himself in, in rare category. And where do we see him? Where should we ultimately see him? He's 66 years old, so he's been doing this for a long time. And, yes, he's been at all Blue Bloods with Kansas and now here at North Carolina. But can we put him in the top five of all time coaching? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think there's a way that you can't put him in the top five. When you look at the fact that he has three titles, this man has played in 11, national, in 11 title games. Just getting – I mean, just getting there, especially at the college level, I think getting there at the college level is harder than at the pro level because, you know, if you sign a guy in the pros, you're going to have him for – and he's really good. You're going to have your franchise guy for four, five, six years, even ten years, depending if you re-sign him. In college, you're going to have your best player for one year. If he's really, really good, you're going to have him for one year, two max, and then you got to start it all over again and you got guys coming in. So um, I think what Roy's done at the college level is absolutely phenomenal. He's definitely in the top five. When you talk about a man that has three – He's won three titles, played in 11 championship games, and he's done it at two programs. He built Kansas up to what they are today. Then he went to Carolina, and he took over when Carolina was kind of teeter-tottering under Matt Doherty and, got, and has gotten three championships in the aftermath of all of that. So I think once you, once you get past uh, John Wooden, Adolph Rupp, I hate to say it, but Coach K is still there with his five titles. Hey, you're missing I somebody. I got, I got a challenge on this, Brendan. You're missing somebody. Okay. Now, maybe I just jumped on and you were about to get to him. I don't think you were. Jim Calhoun. Better coach no. than Roy, better coach than Roy Williams. Is he? I think he is. Yeah. I mean, once again, you know what? When you're talking about two guys that have three titles, it's up for interpretation. Yeah. I can't. I won't speak bad against Coach Jim Calhoun because he has three titles. So, no, when you have three titles, no one gets to say anything bad about you. You can say Jim Calhoun should be in front of Roy, and I can say okay. And if I say Roy's in front of Jim Calhoun, you probably still have to say okay. <laughs> yeah, I all wouldn't. left up to interpretation. <laughs> All those guys are great. In my they mind, are great. They are great. I think Carol, I think uh, that Roy is top five. I think once you get past Wooden, Rub, what about Coach Bobby Day? Knight? Uh, See, I, I, I don't think probably. he's top five, and I don't mean I don't want to and, turn and this into a critique prob- fest. It's, and it might be the likability side of him too. That in your mind about Bobby, n- yeah, no, not, I can't stand Bobby Knight. That's what I mean. So I don't think he's a good person. I've always said that. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, once again, you got to take everything in the con- – and I, actually, I don't want to get up here and, and bash any of these coaches because they're all great. No, no, we're bashing them. You're good, man. You're just our guest. <laughs> it's Brendan Haywood with us here. Of course, CBS Sports, sports uh, College Hoops analyst, former Tar Heel. Yeah, no, Feeling it, good today. It, exactly. It can't all be uh, you know, roses here down in North Carolina. And, and, and I think Roy Williams brought this up himself. They've been investigating this um, academic impropriety that went on a few